Well, good morning. I'm Rick White. I want to welcome everybody to the second day of the State of the Net Conference. We had a great program yesterday, and I recognize a lot of faces, so I'm sure you all enjoyed it as much as I do. I want to say hello this morning to Jerry Berman, who's here again. Jerry, thanks, hello, Rick. thanks for being here, and uh, you were a great uh, contributor yesterday, so we appreciated that. Um, I think our program just gets better and better as this conference goes on, and our keynote speaker this morning is a perfect example of that. Uh, we're really uh, happy and privileged to have Tony Malone with us today from, from Verizon. Uh, Tony's an electri electrical engineer, which uh, you know in our business is, uh, is one of the you know, best professions to be in. Uh, he started out at uh, Bell Atlantic and then continued with Verizon when those uh, two companies got together. I think in his early part of his career he ran the wireless uh, operations side of it, so that was a big, uh, uh, big job for him to have. And uh, he just recently uh, became uh, Executive Vice President and S Chief Technology Officer of the entire Verizon Communications company. So we're, that was just in December. Um, his his um, experience with wireless operations, of course, is something that's really critical to uh, to our industry these days. And uh, but I think, frankly, the the entire uh, infrastructure that he's uh, dealing with now is something that really will play a big role in what we're uh, what our industry and the internet in general is about. So. Uh, Tony, we're really happy to have you here, and uh, we welcome you to, to this conference. Thank you. Rick, thank you very much. Jerry, my pleasure. And Tim, uh, it's, it really is a pleasure to be here this morning with you. Um, and what I hope to do over the next 15 to 20 minutes or so is give you my view on what the industry is doing, and, and obviously more specifically what Verizon is doing to con continue to stimulate innovation and technology for the good of consumers, obviously for the good of the nation. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what we have done and where I think things are going and, the, and, and what's important for all of us uh, to drive, for us to be successful and to, and to drive the innovation that, that will help us all. There's no doubt that the telecommunications industry has experienced rapid technological change over the last decade. And, and really, it's been fueled by consumers and what consumers desire, what they want, what they drive us to do. Uh, our CEO, Ivan Seidenberg, recently at the Consumer Electronics Show, he talked about how technology is allowing us to erase borders, whether that's borders between work and home, uh, between um, here and there, virtual and reality. And that's what consumers are driving us to do. They want everything at their fingertips. They want to be connected, whether they're in their homes, in cars, in buildings. Just that feeling of connectedness all the time is what consumers are telling us they want. Now, wireless technology in itself has advanced tremendously, uh, much more powerful today than ever. I mean, the things you can do in a wireless environment today were things not long ago that you could only do if you were tethered to your desk and your desktop at work. And now you see these little things we carry in our pockets are tremendous. They're more powerful than, than the computers we used just a few years ago. And the United States is at the center of this technology and the evolution and revolution. If you look at 10 years ago, one in three consumers had a cell phone. Now it's over nine in 10. We've gone from 2G to 3G and now 4G. And with every improvement, we're expanding the marketplace. Wireless data consumption doubles every year. It's amazing the amount of capacity we added in our network last year and what we plan to do this year. This is over on top of building our 4G network. This is just on 3G. Tremendous growth, we're seeing. Obviously, smartphones and the penetration. Now, 90% growth a year in smartphones. So you can see that the demand is there and we have to find innovative ways to deliver on that, on that expectation. Now, while consumers are driving this mobile market, it's not always easy to figure out what they're going to want tomorrow. And so at Verizon, one of the things that we've been doing is investing year over year in making sure our networks are future-proof, whether it's on the wired network with fiber, or in the wireless network, which I'm going to speak more about today, with 4G LTE. It's so critical for us as innovators to be out ahead of what our customers want and push the envelope of technology. 
And that's why consistent investment in the most advanced and most reliable networks has been our philosophy and will con continue to be to ma and make sure that we can allow the U.S. <laughs> to be a leader in this environment. So now Verizon, as, as, uh, as we touched on, has embarked on the next generation of technology, fourth generation broadband called LTE. Early in December, I'm sure you know, we launched our, the nation's first large scale broadband 4G LTE network. 38 cities uh, covering over 100 million of the U.S. population. So a third of the nation's population covered on day one. And as has been our tradition, we're going to be very aggressive at expanding that footprint over the next three years. We expect to have the entire country, virtually everywhere you have 2G and 3G today, covered by the end of 2013. If we look 18 months from now, we're looking at half the population covered. And just this year alone, we're looking to add another 140 markets to that LTE footprint. So as you, as you can see, we're expanding tremendously, places like Detroit this year, Memphis, Milwaukee, Honolulu, too many to mention, in addition to the places that we launch in December, which obviously include here in Washington, D.C., but other major markets like Boston and Chicago, L.A., New York, et cetera. So we feel very good about where we are positioned and how we're able to meet the demand that consumers will bring us. Now, if we go back three years ago, we were one of the first in the world to decide on LTE as our directional platform. And we're very pleased that it really has become the de facto global standard. And I think that's critical for consumers and industry to have a standard that we can rally around, not just nationally but globally, and really stimulate innovation outside our industry as well. And one of the most satisfying things we've had so far with our deployment is the feedback we're getting not just from our customers, but also industry analysts, suggest that our decision to go aggressively, early, and go in a big way was not only the right decision for us, but the right decision for the industry. I mean, the actual performance that customers are getting, they're giving us feedback, and we obviously have our own metrics, but feedback that suggests they're getting speeds 10 times what they experience in our 3G network, you know, over 10 megabits per second. People are telling us they're downloading 10 megabyte presentations in less than 10 seconds. And a number of customers have said, hey, I've tried this in my home and I get faster speeds than I do with my cable broadband at home. So we're seeing the evidence of what this technology can do in a mobile environment. So what does LTE mean for consumers and the industry going forward? And it's important that we recognize that LTE is not just about doing things faster. It's really about creating an environment, in a, a mobile environment, that wasn't possible with prior technologies. So it's opening up a whole new space of innovation, mobile innovation, because of the capabilities of the technology. So it's those bandwidth-hungry applications, multimedia-rich applications, rapid response interval applications. These are all the things that now we have at our fingertips with LTE. And just as first, second, and third generation technologies really change the way we work, the way we live, 4G LTE <coughs> is going to offer the same and really make dramatic impacts in businesses. Now, some of the reasons I believe this to be the case, number one, LTE is a pure IP-based technology. So as such, it's going to work seamlessly with any IP-based technology, whether it's wired or wireless. So we finally have that convergence of IP throughout the, the landscape. Speeds, as I said, go up dramatically, tenfold. I mean, we're, we're communicating to our customers to expect speeds of 5 to 12 megabits per second. And when we communicate that, that's anticipating you know, a reasonably loaded network. That's not just today because the network's not yet loaded. That's what we're engineering to net the network to perform, how we want the network to perform. Today, I experience at times 20, 25, 
megabits per second today. But again, I think it's important that we communicate to customers what the expectation should be and not overhype what it can do in an unloaded environment. So that's what we're trying to do when we communicate 5 to 12. The second, uh, the second piece of the puzzle, in addition to speed, is latency. Latency or network delay. This may be more important than speed. When, it, when, it, when you combine low latency, you now allow for those rich multimedia applications that want real-time response. Video collaboration is one example. So the combination of speed and low latency is really the secret ingredient that LTE allows for. And so the transformation, I would say, that's going to occur as a result of this new technology really is, you know, can be looked at with, you know, in the eyes of four significant trends. Uh, the first trend, I just talked about real-time delivery. When you take the super low latency of LTE, it's effectively equivalent to a wired connection. And that instantaneous response time allows certain things to occur. Now, can you imagine, you know, the online gamers have a field day with this stuff. I mean, they play these games and they react to the device and it goes in up the network, back down, and they can react and play games among each other from distances across the country. But mobile entertainment is not the only aspect here. If it was all about mobile entertainment, it'd be nice, but it really not, as tr not transformative. Think about doctors remotely doing video consults with a patient or analyzing MRI or x-ray results remotely. Think about subject matter experts being remote and being able to visually see a situation on the ground and be able to guide the hands and feet on the street with that high-definition video, real-time response. Think about first responders going to a scene and having real-time video sent to them on their mobile device so they can assess the situation before they get there. All these opportunities, all these capabilities are there with this technology. Now, second key trend is evident in these examples, and that is video. You can, you can see that video is a critical aspect to all of these. And I think our world is evolving where communication you know, tends to be more visual. And consumers, businesses desire that visual communication more so than ever. And LTE provides that capability. And not just about, again, downloading videos, but real-time video teleconferencing and collaboration is now possible. The third transformative trend with LTE is related to connected device, devices, sometimes referred to as machine to machine. You know, with 4G LTE, it makes possible intelligent applications ranging from remote diagnostics to restocking of shelves, you know, making way in a home, vehicle, appliances, etc. You know, and when you talk about a global standard, the ability to drive these chips and drive the cost of these chips down so it becomes economical to provide these capabilities in various consumer electronics devices and other connected devices I think will be critical. It's going to drive wireless broadband very deep into the way people work, into industry, into businesses, change the way businesses operate, and maybe create whole new business opportunities as a result. Now, we're clearly excited about launching this powerful network, but the fourth trend hits on the fact that this is not just about the network. It's, not, you know, there's, it's more about taking this powerful network and combining it with powerful applications, powerful devices. So the, a collaborative environment is absolutely critical for all of us, our industry, to take advantage of this technology and the other ancillary technologies around it to really drive innovation for the good of our nation, for the good of our consumers, for the good of our businesses. We've often said in our business, LTE is our technology platform for the future, but openness and collaboration is the operating platform of the future for Verizon. Absolutely necessary if we're to get to the full promise of LTE. Now that hasn't always been the case in the wireless industry. 
The first 25 years of our industry, typically a more guarded approach, closed systems, served our industry well, served our companies well, and we think it served our customers well. But times have changed. The whole value chain is changing and the capabilities are changing. In a 4G world, that guarded model needs to be turned inside out. One developer at a recent conference talked about, you know, the reality is next innovation, the next innovation, the next great idea is going to come from a place from which you least expect. And that's absolutely the case. And, and all of us in the industry need to be in a position to create an environment to allow that innovation to occur and provide not only our business, but our customers the ability to take advantage of that innovation. So clearly, working with partners, entrepreneurs, innovators is extremely important to us. And as a result, we've taken a, taken a number of steps over the last several years. Now, last year, we opened our LTE Innovation Center in Waltham, Massachusetts. And what that center is meant to do is create basically a, an incubation environment for non-traditional suppliers of mobile devices to come in and sit and work with our engineers who can tell them what LTE can do and then allow them to create products or enhance their products by utilizing the power of LTE. We've had companies, um, large co companies, small companies, single person companies come in and take advantage of that. And as a result of that, our booth at the Consumer Electronics Show earlier this month had a host of these companies there presenting their products. And, and people walked away, you know, quite frankly surprised that a lot of what we've been talking about is real. They saw the products. And it gave people a sense, you know what, this momentum is building. And the reality is that we are going to leverage this technology and we are going to innovate on it and we are going to have creative products coming to market sooner than people expected. Similarly, this year on the applications front, we're planning to open uh, an application innovation center in San Francisco. So while in Waltham, Massachusetts, we're dealing with the devices, in San Francisco, we're dealing about uh, trying to stimulate folks providing applications that are tailored to an LTE environment. So we're very excited about that. And then to further accelerate these initiatives, we created a 4G Venture Forum with a number of venture capital funds, again, to create seed money and opportunities to stimulate new ideas and new innovation. So we feel very good about the ecosystem around innovation really coming together. Now, Verizon, we were committed very early to 4G LTE. And that commitment allowed us to do the shaping of this ecosystem. And quite frankly, by sending a strong signal that we were going to be very aggressive in deploying this technology, one of the things that some folks suggested would, you know, would not come along as fast, the, the environment of devices, of chipsets, et cetera, I can tell you that we've been so pleased with the way that broader ecosystem has come together right along with us. And again, which allowed us to show 10 consumer devices launching in LTE in the first half of this year. So the strategy about being aggressive and communicating that and bringing people in seems to have really worked in getting that flywheel going aggressively. And we're just warming up. These partnerships are just solid building blocks for the future and will continue to evolve. And when you expand the definition of wireless devices from smartphones and laptops and tablets to home appliances and vehicles, the possibilities are extraordinary and obviously they're limitless. So finally, let me stay on the theme of partnering for a moment. You know, we talked about 4G LTE and being very aggressive in deploying it. But quite frankly, there are places in this country where we do not have a 2G or a 3G network today. And very difficult for us to get LTE out to those places 
while we're still trying to get LTE out to the places where we have a 2G or 3G network. Now, we were planning to get there, but we thought, you know what, a better approach would be to partner with some of the rural, rural carriers that have networks in those locations already. So we undertook an initiative to allow leasing, providing our 700 spectrum to those rural carriers, and allowing them to build their own LTE network on our spectrum, but connect into our core so it looks and feels like to customers a seamless national 4G LTE network. Since the program launched six months ago, we've had over 240 companies express interest. We have agreements signed with, uh, I believe the number is up to six now, at five or six. We've uh, obviously communicated, I think Bluegrass has communicated and a few others. We're leaving the external communication with those companies. But the ones we've signed already cover 1.7 million custom, uh, population and over 50,000 square miles. So you can imagine the kind of leverage we get from this partnership. So we're very excited about that. So finally, let me leave you on the point I started with. The US wireless industry in the last 25 years has been a vibrant growth engine. It's been spurring innovation, it created jobs, et cetera. But now with 4G LTE, we have one more example of how we're going to allow technology and utilize technology to drive more growth, and, and not, just, not just growth in our industry, but surrounding industries as well, giving customers more choices, more platforms, more devices, more device form factors, and let that innovation take hold and take us to where we need to go as, a, as an industry and as a nation. So with that, uh, I'm sure we have a little time. I'd be glad to take That's questions. That's great. I'm Gary Arlen from Arlen Communications. Last week or two weeks ago at CES, I watched Mr. Seidenberg and Mr. Oak McAdams describe what they have in mind and then turn it over to Jeff Bukas and uh, Time Warner and uh, Sanjay Jha from, from uh, Motorola. But the big part of that presentation was from Google, the product manager talking about Honeycomb and all they're doing. That leads to a lot of issues of how in this partnering that you just referred to, where you're going with it, how you partner with a company that has its own aspirations and intentions yeah. in this industry. Yeah. You know, good question. I mean, we, we uh, you know, as much as collaboration and partnership is, um, is essential, we all see it, it certainly poses challenges in terms of just about everyone we partner with in some shape, way, shape, or form is somewhat of a competitor in, in other areas. And, and Google, Google's a great example of that. Uh, but I think all of us recognize that we wear different hats, and for Google to be successful, uh, they need partnerships with wireless carriers, and you've seen how our work with them over the years, over the last year especially, has really stimulated Android sales. Uh, by the same token, we recognize that the power that the Android operating system brings and the Honeycomb uh, operating system will bring to tablets is a great advantage to, uh, to us as a business and able, allow us to enable uh, us to meet our customers' expectations there. So I see our relationship with Google continuing to grow, uh, but I also see our relationship with other similar providers continue to grow. Obviously, our announcement with, uh, with Apple um, last two weeks ago is another example. And, uh, and we, believe, uh, we believe our customers benefit the most if we offer a broad set of products and capabilities and choices. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Kerry Hinton. I'm with the D.C. Public Service Commission. I was interested in, in the uh, comments you made in the latter part of your presentation about partnering with rural wireless carriers. And I wanted to know whether that was an indication that Verizon Wireless is not planning on extending its own infrastructure, its own network, into rural areas, and specifically, how does that relate to the FCC's uh, 
national broadband proceedings, their USF reform proceedings, yeah. and so on, which places a, a heavy emphasis on relying on wireless service providers to provide broadband service to the unserved areas. Yeah, so, so um, I'm, I'm not sure I'll, um, I can speak to some of the, the policy questions you talked about at the end, but I, I think I might be able to answer your question based on what, what our strategy is here. If there's only one slice of 700 megahertz spectrum that we own, okay? So if we build on that, then our customers have access to our network. If we lease that to a, a rural provider, then they have access to that. It's an either or either way. The, the spectrum can't be used by both of us, okay? So really the question is, who is going to put that spectrum that we bought to use in the quickest fashion? And when we look across the nation and see what we have in front of us, we knew that there was white space out there where we have nothing today, no towers, no infrastructure, that we weren't going to get to right away. Now, there's some places we want to get to, and we're not going to enter into an agreement with a rural carrier there because we don't want to build our own network. But there's many other places where we think strategically, you know what, let's partner, let them build. Our customers will roam on their network, probably, you know, most likely a lot sooner than if we waited on ourselves to build it. So we believe this is advancing LTE in those environments, and it's not, a, it's not taking away options from customers, because there only would have been, if we, if we built then the rural carrier would not have an LTE network there. Okay. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a question, but it's it's kind of a rural question too. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to. I've left Washington and headed to West Virginia, and where I've gone, it's uh, wire is one megabit down. Right. Um, wireless is missing. Uh, the the incumbent carriers out there you know, are, you'd have to rebuild their network. Right. Um, and everyone is waiting for Verizon right. to come down the road, right. uh, where the costs are high, but the demand is incredible. Right. And we're, yeah. last point, if they don't get it, the economics of yeah. the economy of those rural areas is in the tank yeah. for a long time yeah. without this technology. Yeah. Jerry, How do you do it? Yeah, I understand that. We, we um, I, I've, Actually, we spent some time with Senator Rockefeller, and we have plans in West Virginia, specific plans to provide LTE in places, some places where we have no network today. So the way we're doing it, uh, obviously, one of the challenges we face there is, despite it being wireless technology, um, you need backhaul. And typically, we're providing fiber to all our cell sites, and in places like West Virginia, options, providers of fiber are not as prevalent as they are in other parts of the country. So part of it is our aggressiveness to build LTE will hopefully stimulate some of those providers to build fiber and again, create a broader, you know, just economic boost in that area. But the other alternative is microwave and to do more microwave backhaul. So we have plans to do both. We have 10 cities in, uh, in West Virginia that we committed to build out. Um, we'll have Charleston, uh, you know, in the first, I believe it's by March or so, March or April, um, launching in Charleston. And uh, then we have two other, uh, two other locations coming, uh, you know, in the not too distant future and eventually uh, 10. So uh, I agree with you. I think the rural environment uh, with L LTE gives us a, a tremendous advantage. Uh, to start to meet the needs of rural America that we didn't have before. Don't give me your zip code, Jerry. It's not necessarily going to. Thank you so Thank much. You. We really appreciate it.